Hello. Hi, everybody. My name is David Monias. As you know, I am your host today. Uh, I will be your chef, be the one helping you with the instructions. And I will also be helping uh, just be like the funny man today. <laughs> As you notice, I do have a chair today. Uh, I just wanted to save myself some time and be able to sit down for a bit. Sometimes like this table is quite low. <laughs> but I also wanted to give a spotlight to my co-host today. Want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Karen. Really happy to join you again for Food is Medicine. And I'm really excited about this wonderful recipe. And welcome to our previous participants. And welcome to all the new ones. And a shout out to Gladys. Shout out to Knowledge Keeper Gladys for joining us. Thank you. Awesome. And with that said, uh, I, I will start with um, our land acknowledgement and just anything else we have to say today. Uh, of course, I always like to mention that we are on Treaty 1 territory, or at least I am. Uh, that is the home of the Cree, Anishinaabe, and Ojibwe. It's also the heart of the Métis Nation. And we just always like to give our acknowledgements that we're on our our relatives land and that we always want to keep mindful of that. Um, yeah, and I guess today uh, we can get started. We did start a little bit later today, but that is okay. Um, it just kind of gives us time to more spend time together and whatnot. But with that said, I'm going to switch over to our overhead view and we're going to get started. So I do have here prepared some meat and hopefully everybody can trust the process. Um, uh, this is some um, <laughs> lean cut beef. This is, will be kind of like what we're starting with today. Some people have more cubes, some people will have this and I'm gonna bring it up closer just so you can see. Uh, I am actually gonna be cutting them a little bit thinner today just cause I, I do like that kind of bit of that. And I also like the fact that it can, um, we can have more meat for everybody. And of course I'm gonna start today with our knife. Uh, I believe we got these at Costco or any other place like that. And I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna start this. And for those who don't know and who aren't regulars here today, I always like to wash my hands before we start our programs today. So usually I do try to be mindful of that. And again, when working with um, raw beef or any kind of raw meat in general, we do wanna be washing our hands in between things. And we also wanna be mindful of this tool. So that I actually have two cutting boards here. There's one over here, I'm not gonna touch it. And there's one over here. Um, now that this meat, this knife has come in contact with uh, the beef here today, I'm actually going to not, I'm going to keep it in its separate own spot. And then once I'm actually done with it, I'm actually going to put it in our sink just so I can wash it later. Um, but with that said, open on up your beef and I'm just going to rip mine open. And hopefully I am just going to throw the wrapper into the garbage. And I'm actually gonna be sharing some other stuff like little tips that we can be using. Hopefully yours is defrosted today. -ish. Um, we didn't freeze these at all, but yeah. Again, we're just gonna be stripping these up. I do have actually my um, cooking pot that we'll have right here. And I'm actually gonna bring it a little bit closer just so it kind of prevent any cross contamination. We don't want our meat going over here or there. And I actually even chose the, our cutting board that has this little kind of like a moat but I'm just gonna strip it. And we wanna be careful when we're working with knives, especially sharp ones. And we're just gonna rip them and kind of strip them there. You can cut them to your size. If you prefer big chunks, that is okay. These do kind of shrink a little bit uh, once they're cooked. And we're just gonna throw them in there. Uh, now in our recipe book, it actually says uh, we, you can use oil or we mentioned that we will use oil. It's not necessarily a requirement. It does help with it. I am going to be using it today just because I'm actually going to be kind of, I'm a solo chef today and I'm going to be switching between <laughs> our oven over there and over here. And I'm actually going to be uh, browning them kind of like while I do uh, some of the other stuff here. Hopefully in a home kitchen setting, you can be able to cut right beside it. I, as you can see, mine is separated and we're working out of an office or our studio. <laughs> and it's not set up in that quite that same direction. So I'm going to be cooking a little bit lower and I'm actually going to have some of that oil kind of help with that process. And I'm just going to be um, going back to the meat. I'm actually just cutting it up into smaller chunks here. 
and just getting it going. And yeah, there's not much to it. It is quite like tedious. I'm gonna be a little bit quicker now that I have explained all my pieces and I'm gonna get going. Karen, if you have anything to chime in, please do. Um, <laughs> there will be a lot of moments today where it's a little bit quieter as there'll be a lot of chopping and a lot of like just hanging out and watching our foods. Yeah, today is uh, quite a, a, a work-filled recipe, and then there's time needed for cooking. So in, in order to, um, for the meat to cook faster, and then for the beef to soften a little quicker, cutting it into uh, smaller pieces really helps. And also um, we'll extend it so that there's, there's more uh, little pieces around. of meat. Yeah, and I don't know if your grandma ever did this, but when there was company at the door and the soup pot was getting low, add a cup of water. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, lots of times um, we're cooking on a budget or we have a little bit and we want to share. Um, I mean, our little packages have been quite uh, extensive today and we know that um, you can add in more if you have in your crisper that you want to add mushrooms or corn or anything that you have on hand. Um, and you're welcome to do that as we go. Uh, our goal for food as medicine is to have this community time together, to be able to have this connection. I know with the COVID, our offices and many others um, have been closed. So this is a good opportunity for us to be able to see you all and connect with you and, and to um, build that relationship. And also at the same time, we're building on our cooking skills. We're establishing these um, new or, or uh, recipes that maybe we haven't tried before. I know that um, I'm looking forward to trying it with the barley because I haven't cooked with barley before. So um, maybe this weekend I'll get a chance to make it with with the barley. Um, we have chosen to use beef for this recipe, the stewing beef, but if you were to recreate it in the future, you could always use a wild meat, um, moose meat or um, elk meat. Uh, you could also use hamburger if you wanted. And you know, I think it would actually even work with, with chicken. You know, oh yes. It would be really good with chicken. Um, and for those of you that, that joined uh, a little bit after um, we started, I wanna let you know that um, I had a smudge going for all of us of uh, the prairie sage and sweetgrass so that we could start in a good way. Um, and even though that we're working separately, we're still together in, in circle. Um, and two, like the food that we prepare nourishes our body and helps us in those good ways. The meat we need to build muscle, the meat we need to keep us warm, um, and the vegetables help to strengthen our blood in that good way. So I'm really happy that we're able to share this abundance with, with all of us. Where are you at with your, with your beef, David? I, I've successfully and finished uh, shredding them up. And it's quite a bit and it fills like a lot more now that we can kind of see that that oh, almost kind of even like evenly coats the pan now that i've shredded it and like i really am thankful for you to mention that like there is room to substitute a lot um a nice thing about with a lot of these um soup recipes is that they're they're really open for improvis improvisation um can you give me one moment while <laughs> uh wash my hands and one thing actually i'm gonna bring attention to it um like I mentioned before, when we're working with meat, we are always going to be uh, washing our hands just because we don't want to contaminate. And there's a lot of harmful bacteria that we can do. And I'm actually even going to be including on my need a kitchen safe uh, Clorox wipe. And I'm going to wipe the surrounding air. And we're going to make sure we're going to be careful of that. And we're going to let that dry. And just so that there isn't any kind of um, 
contaminants on our on our our cooking surfaces or even like our prep table. And I always rinse my hands after because it's always encouraged that um, <laughs> when working with food, you don't want to be using chemicals or even like things like uh, hand sanitizers to be cleaning your hands. If possible, you could use that to kind of kill things, but I really prefer if folks uh, wash their hands afterwards, just like I did there. And with that said, I'm actually going to show you guys. Uh, I'm just going to use a tiny bit of oil. And that's just the kind of, again, just kind of make sure none of that gets stuck up. And we're just going to make sure it kind of goes all the way around. I don't know how well that's captured on camera. Probably not. Maybe it is. But, you know, once actually this starts heating up, it's actually going to be cooking. Um, it's actually going to be kind of cooking and making its oil, own oil. And from that grease, it's not a terrible thing to have. And it's actually going to be adding to our recipe today. And with that said, I'm going to actually start my oven on medium to low. If you are, um, the camera's not over here. But if you guys are cooking in a group today, you could have that a little bit higher and have someone watch it. I'm just being cautious just because I'm going to be bouncing between two spots. And of course, if you are cooking solo, like I said, if your oven's right here and you're cooking right here, then it's all fine. Um, but I'm just trying to be mindful and extra safe. I'd love to make sure <laughs> we don't do any harm to our property here. And with that said, um, I'm just going to let that kind of get started and warmed up. And I'm going to check on it after every or every set of vegetables that we do today. And yeah. So I'm actually going to even include a little bit of a teaching on how to cook um, your own broth. So. One thing that we actually are we're going to be using today are either these guys or these ones. Oh, actually, I didn't realize we we're overhead camera. Uh, we have these ones. Our, these are actually Boulon stock cubes or even like little packs. Um, these are actually kind of like replacements for um, stock or even just buying like vegetable stock or anything like that from the office or not the office, the store. Um, but we're going to use that today just to kind of keep in mind. But while I'm cooking and preparing some vegetables here, I'm actually going to be providing some tips on how to do that. And I'm actually going to be saving them today just so that I can probably use them at home. Um, but I'll, it'll just be kind of a talking point today while I cook. And the first things I'm actually going to start with is an onion. Just because um, I actually really like browning my meat with onion. It adds that extra little bit of flavor. If you don't like using a lot of onions, you could use onion powder. It is a nice um, substitute. And yeah, and again, today I'm actually gonna be starting, I'm gonna, instead of cutting right down the middle, I'm actually just gonna cut shy of like the, the stem here and kind of just shy of like the navel. Maybe that's the same thing, but either or. And I'm always gonna be careful. I'm gonna have my fingers clean and out of the, the range. And it's just gonna go nice and easy. So first nice thing about the stock too, is you wanna make your own stock. And I really wanna, um, if you don't, that's okay. I just thought I'd share it. Um, is that we're gonna remove this outer layer here. So when we make our own stock, it's gonna be a lot more veg, uh, flavorful. It's gonna be yummy. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna peel this top layer off. And I'm not gonna use the whole onion today, I don't believe. Um, but I'm going to use quite a bit of onions just because I do like my a little bit more onion full. And I'm going to keep this part over here. And then one thing to note also that you may or may not see because of movie magic is that I actually pre-washed all my vegetables today. But yeah, I'm actually going to keep a lot of my scraps here. If it's edible, I mean, it may not be edible. I wouldn't want to eat this. But if it's something that we can kind of boil later on and make a stock out of, I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to identify some of the things that we can keep and we can't. Um, and I'm going to actually bring together my bowl over here. This is going to be where all my spots go. And what we're going to do today is we're going to cut off the stem here, right? And we can actually keep some of this. I'm actually not going to use all of it. It tends to have a little bit more of a bitter flavor. And you can peel that off and see this part that maybe you wouldn't want to keep. Um, I'm actually going to store that. And, I'm, and I'll go more into the stock afterwards too. And I'm going to get this other top here. I don't like that kind of 
the end piece here. It tends to kind of be a little bit kind of weird. But this part, you could use this in your recipe. Um, it's really up to you. But I actually like using this part for stock as well. And I'm going to cut this into smaller bits. And be mindful that this is going to make you cry and I'm going to look like I've been sobbing for hours. So please do have a laugh. <laughs> And again, I'm just going to bring that down to a smaller bit so I can kind of process that a little bit better. And we always be careful as we get closer to our, our, our fingers here. We always kind of pull our thumb in like this. And we have our fingers a little bit more flat. And it always remind me if you don't see me doing that. Sometimes I forget as well. And then we're actually going to be dicing them up today. I prefer them a little bit smaller. And we're going to do that. We're going to have some of that there, and I'm going to actually going to put them in here. Ooh, it's already getting me crying. Ooh, be careful not to touch your eyes with um, your <laughs> nice oniony fingers. <laughs> you probably irritate your eyes even further. So either use your sleeve or the corner of your elbow. But yeah, <laughs> now this will be for one for like a year-end review. And then we're just going to go back to this and I'm actually going to use the half of this or the quarter of the onion I have here and I'm just going to get a good amount of it. And I like, oh, <laughs> it went far today it's because I was blinking. And with, if that happens, you can also just cut them up in anyways. We're not like Chef Gordon Ramsay today and we're just going to do that and we're just going to dice them up into a bit. And then if you actually notice, sometimes they're actually... Um, you'll see it's still kind of intact. That's actually pretty fine. When you're agitating it and you're stirring it up in the pot, they actually kind of naturally like separate, the layers will separate. So like there's a piece right here. If I just like rub it, it's gonna come off into pieces. And that's okay if, if you don't have the perfect cuts, it will kind of give you that. Karen, I have to ask, have you ever made your own homemade stock before? I. Well, as you know, David, I am in love with my instant pot. <laughs> and uh, there's a thing that you can make with the instant pot um, like that's called um, bone broth. And I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I like this idea of making stock um, because buying the liters is heavy at the grocery store. If we're able to have it at home in the fridge, I think it would be super handy. And I think that's why we went with the powder this time, just to save uh, the shoppers uh, having to carry so many uh, liters of broth. Of course. And, and I've been watching some of the uh, participants, some of the screens, and I see everybody's chopping and everybody's busy. Um, nobody has asked any questions. so. Everybody, I think, is on track. Awesome. And then I'm just going to head over to my oven here. You'll actually see that I'm crying quite a bit. <laughs> These are quite potent onions. Um, they're not as one brown as I'd like to. Pardon me while I go grab another spatula. You could use a spoon if you like. I'm going to use a spatula. Um, I do have, we have provided ladles today for our recipe. And we're just going to throw them on in there. And like you said, it might be kind of weird, but um, yeah, just throw them on there. If there's some leftovers in there, that is okay. We will be kind of continue to cutting up veggies. And yeah, I'm actually gonna have a separate ladle because I'm gonna be touching a lot of this cooked meat. And we're gonna turn up this heat a little bit more. And I'm just gonna mix it all in there and agitate it and kind of get those onion pieces separated. And kind of when they're cooking, they'll kind of separate as well. And they'll kind of shrink. Oh, and David, Jordan, Jordan popped up in the chat and she said, if you don't cut the end, you won't cry. I have heard that <laughs> and I believe it. No one has showed me up in person how not to do that. Whew. Okay. And that's why I kind of like avoided it. But um, yeah, I guess it is like a natural defense mechanism of the onion to kind of like let off that kind of reaction and i'm just going to have that there and then again as i've noticed before or have you seen me use it before i have a plate here just for the raw meat 
I'm not going to be using this spatula for a while, so I'm actually going to be putting that into the, the sink. And then I'm going to actually be having this elsewhere and having its own plate once it's ready. And I'm just going to let that brown up, brown up more and kind of get going. And we're going to get back into it. Um, and we can start just cutting some of the random vegetables, if you like. Okay, so um, you can keep the camera on, David, and I'll, I'll just uh, talk a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. So you're doing, is that potatoes there, David? Yes, I am. And, so you can uh, see David's got the skin on. Um, the skin helps to give extra fiber. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a big fan of um, um, keeping the skin on for most of my recipes, even like our mashed potatoes. So you'll see that a lot. But sometimes um, I might opt for not having it because I know there are some people who have family who are picky eaters. And sometimes people kind of see this and they're like, mm, I don't know how I feel about that. And that's okay. I mean, realistically, if we're kind of making sure our loved ones are being fed, I don't mind catering to that. But I would like to encourage you to, to try that with them. I'm glad you're able to bring that up. Thank you so much, Karen. I almost forgot. And I'm, I'm looking at the screens. I'm seeing all the cooking happening. Everybody looks like they're doing well. So um, we, we can go through a little bit more of the chopping. And then I'm going to uh, ask everybody how they're doing. So there's Jordan. Ooh. I have one thing to uh, bring up before I before we go into that before. Okay. So one second. I am so sorry. Um, but if I do keep the skin on, I do want to encourage people to really wash them. There is kind of dirt on here. And then like, well, it won't hurt you. I'm sure you don't want it. <laughs> um, and I have also actually removed a lot of the kind of like the eyes. Some of the eyes are not always great to have with you. Um, so I've been just kind of piecing them out there. And if you notice any parts where like, um, there's like these natural little cuts and they're going deep and they're kind of getting dark and they're changing the color of the inside of the potato. I actually tend to just not use those pieces and I just cut around them, whether that be kind of just like going like this, like a little shave and removing it. Um, I'll use it stuff like that. And then there's even pieces right here. I'll even just make an incision right there and make an incision right there and just kind of cut out that one piece and minimize the waste, to be honest. Um, but yeah. Uh, go on um, supporting people and highlighting some of the cooking. So there was a question about uh, what seasonings to put in with the meat. In step one of our paper recipe, it says um, the oil, the stewing beef, and seasonings. So if you have, uh, like David had added the onion, you could add in your salt and pepper. And if you have anything on hand, I mean, um, I think last week, many, or the week before, hi, many of you would have received um, a little jar of uh, seasoning salt. Uh, you can put that in there. If you have um, cloves of garlic from a few weeks back or uh, garlic powder. Even the garlic, garlic even got included. Um, okay. Actually, maybe I'll put that in next. Uh, Thank you for so much for highlighting. I normally kind of put in a little bit later and then sometimes there is some deviations from like the recipe that we do give out here. Um, and then people might even have their own deviations from how they cook at home. So just do whatever your heart pleases. Um, the nice thing about soups is like, again, they do bring up a lot of room for, for freestyling and you're able to kind of um, cook how you want and flavor how you like to. And I'm so sorry for interrupting you once more, Karen. I should have no worries. We're we're getting into a good flow. This is week five of our our cooking adventure together. Uh, I mean, I think we're doing really well as uh, beginning TV hosts and and figuring this out as we go. Um, yeah. So we appreciate the community's understanding that uh, we are. Um, home cooks and this is uh, a pop-up studio so we are doing the best that we can to to try this new thing together with everybody hi nice to see you hello i see peter's busy chopping <laughs> looks great 
Oh, I know. And there's Gladys and Willow's home, Melissa and Zoe. And of course you can add your salt and pepper in as well um, anytime. And Valencia is busy at the stove. I see steam, it looks great. What a beautiful kitchen. Hi Jordan, how's it going? Excellent. Don't be shy. Can I check up on your meat if you haven't already. I'm doing so as well. And oh, then... yeah. You can see the colors changing on, on the meat. Mm -hmm. And you can and see that there's a bunch of liquid coming up. Yeah. And we're going to keep that. And we're going to kind of keep that. Um, it really does add flavor. Sometimes you could strain it if you really want to and kind of be mindful of like your intakes. But today I'm just going to. Not. And then I'm actually going to use a. Oh, that was a good amount of salt and pepper. That is the wrong wow. side. But that is okay because realistically, we're going to have a quite a lot going in here today and it's going to be fine. And as long as we mix it up, it'll be evenly distributed. You could use the salt that we provided today, but I'm actually going to use a uh, seasoning salt just for my own taste. And it really isn't too much different from it. It just has some like minor additions, but I'm also realistically both are fine. And then I'm going to go back to the here. Uh, while that's cooking and kind of going, I'm going to speed up my process here and I'm actually going to start on our onion cloves, uh, the onion cloves, <laughs> our garlic cloves. And we're just going to remove some of the layers here and then you Realistically, I, I do want to mention if you are going to keep these for broth, maybe not so much. Uh, I know they can be a little bit potent and a little bit different. I am going to use a little bit of this stuff here. And I'm actually going to rip apart this. Ooh. And I'm actually going to use a few cloves, not too much, not too little, just the right amount. And you will kind of have to peel these again. We're going to peel them quite a bit until they're cold. They have nice fair, fair skin here. It's a lot lighter and it's a lot more fresh. It actually kind of comes off as a little bit sticky. So keep that in mind. You might want to give your hands a good rinse just because you may or may not have it. And I do want to bring up the fact that um, sometimes when we buy garlic cloves, um, when they sit in our, um, our cabinets for some time, they actually sometimes grow um, Kind of little sprouts and um they are quite edible still um usually where you'll find it is actually in the middle here and if that's the case i would just cut around it because the um when we're cutting that little bit there it actually leaves it quite bitter but it's still quite um tasty and okay to have and we're gonna actually dice these up as small as we can and it's okay if they're not um I actually kind of prefer to have it a little bit diced more just so you don't have any chunks of garlic. But realistically, this stuff is going to kind of like blend and add that flavor everywhere else. And if, you, if you're really not interested in cutting this stuff, you could use a uh, garlic powder. And I'm just, this, we could have it a lot smaller. Um, just for time's sake, I'm just going to kind of keep it like that. Hopefully my cameraman, Chris, doesn't mind garlic. <laughs> and I'm just going to continue there. And you can kind of even see the almost the formation of a sprout there. That is fine. Um, it's more like more or less when it's getting green and you actually notice some kind of like growth is when a lot of that bitterness kind of starts happening. And I think what you can actually may or may not do, don't quote me on this, but um, is when you're preparing a lot of this garlic, as long as you have it separate, it'll actually kind of maybe slow that process down. I know sometimes that works with like bananas and how they ripen. Um, and one thing to also know if you, for beef, um, vegetable stock, you can actually use some of the actual, the fresh um, ingredients here. You can actually throw them in your stock as well. So I like to use my last leftovers and put them in there as well. 
And we're going to finish up with our celery. And I'm going to chop these. And we're going to keep them here. I have one from the small and one from the bigger parts. I'm going to cut this part off and see this. I'm going to store it for later. Um, and there's actually a lot of like messier pieces on mine. It seems like mine went through quite a bit of um, damage. If you don't like eating that, it's quite edible, but honestly, I'm gonna save it for our broth. And I'm gonna talk about more about the broth a little bit later. And it's just kind of the pieces you don't like. Um, if it's not the edible pieces, don't throw it in there. <laughs> um, but yeah. And with that said, I, uh, I kept in mind that I am gonna be rinsing all these. So we're gonna kind of just do quick little chops here. As we get closer to our fingers, we always move it back. Make sure we have stable cuts. I like mine a little bit fuller. Hope you don't mind. You can chop these into kind of halves and then kind of cut them in a similar manner. These are great for stock, but I actually like using them. Chris, our cameraman, wave at me if you like them. You do. So we are going to use them in ours. And it's fine. These are quite edible. I know lots of people who do like using them and don't. And we're just going to throw that there. And yeah. we're seeing some dazzling knife work from Willow. Ooh. Yes. Wonderful. Pan down a little, Gladys. Awesome. Ooh. What a pro. Probably better than me. <laughs> oh. That looks terrific, guys. And I'm just going to bring it back to our uh, carrots here, and we can go back to highlighting after. I actually like um, chopping these guys, especially the thicker base parts, into little smaller strips, and then we'll kind of just kind of go from there. And then sometimes with these knives, you kind of just have to run them. Depends on how sharp they are. It seems like this one's been here in our office for quite a bit. Um, and you kind of have to do that running motion sometimes. And again, always be careful of your fingers. We don't want to lose any of them. Um, yeah. And I, and for carrots, I'm also a big fan of keeping the skin as well. There's a lot of that nutrients there. Um, but you can also shave them. You can use your knife or use this to kind of trim down any parts you don't like. And as long as we're always being mindful of removing the dirt, that is the main <laughs> part. And this, I'm, these parts are actually pretty good for the stock as well. We're gonna keep them over here and I'll chat more about those later. And if you have any direct questions, I can answer those as well after. I just wanna make sure um, people know that I'm not gonna forget about it. And if I do, please remind me. And we're just gonna finish up here and I'm gonna go back to my oven just to add our stock and everything like that. Maybe I'll just finish this one last carrot and I'll move over there. We have another uh, wonderful kitchen tip from Jordan. She says, if you want it easier for garlic, adding salt to mince it will help it cut. And the smaller the mince, the less bitter aftertaste. So that's an excellent tip for cutting garlic. Oh, oh and um, Gladys let us know that she cut her fingers. So. Willow Ooh. and Arizona are cutting for her. So I hope your finger's okay, Gladys. Yeah, please be careful. I'm going to be thinking about you lots today. Hoping for a speedy recovery. Hopefully it was just like a nick and not something deeper. And I just want to uh, jump in and say that we're at quarter to six right now. So your cooking time is probably going to be a little bit after we're finished. <laughs> so uh, don't worry, you can still send in your photos of your finished product. We'd love to see them. Remember it's hashtag food as medicine, hashtag FNFAO. Um, I know Chris is going to put the overlays up soon. Um, so please uh, tag us or inbox it to, to us, send it by email. Uh, we really would love to see how your meals turn out for, for your family. So Twitter is FNFAOMB15. 
Facebook is First Nations Family Advocate. Instagram, uh, your Instagram worthy photos to FNFAO. And of course, hashtag food is medicine. Thank you for reminding me about the time. Um, and there is quite a lot of time. Um, I'm gonna be in the oven shot here. I'm gonna be adding four cups of water. Again, if it doesn't feel like enough, you can add more water. Um, for those who are, I'm gonna go back to our overhead. Those who are, um, who received these, you can actually um, use two of these. If you have one of these, this should be suffice. So if you have the little packs of different brand, that should be fine. This one will be in there. If you do kind of do use some of these stock cubes, do be mindful. You kind of need to also kind of mix them in a little bit and kind of stir them up. And I am going to start. I'm actually going to add a little bit more water, I think. I'm going to add one more cup of water. Thank you so much for reminding me, Karen. And just remember that um, we will be adding some tomato in at the end. It's mm -hmm. important not to add the tomato too soon because it will stop the cooking process of your vegetables. Um, I don't know how many of you have had this experience in your um, beginning chefing it up life uh, where you added the tomatoes too soon and then nothing cooked after. So make sure your veggies are cooked before you add in your tomatoes. Okay. And then just being mindful for time, I actually just stripped apart my, um, my, uh, my cabbage here and I cut them in a way that kind of they'll fall apart in their own. And I do it into strips and then just like the onions, they kind of separate on their own. And we're just going to throw those in there. I'm going to throw my veggies in there now. And I think that's according to our, um, our stuff here. And especially if we're being adding potatoes, you do want to kind of throw them on a little bit earlier, just because like you want them to be tender. And as you can kind of see, it's a very hearty soup here. And uh, if that's said, I'm actually going to add some more water just because. It is a hearty soup. And we're just gonna agitate it and kind of keep it going. Then I'll share my teachings about the stock. Just kind of add the end of the day. Maybe I'll add one more. So I think in total I've used six now. And I'm actually gonna be sharing this with our cameraman, Chris. He's been wonderful with our studio setup. And like I said before, just to make sure we're, we're stirring everything up. And I'm actually gonna turn this up to high. And we're just gonna let that kind of boil. And if you actually have a lid, I would actually encourage you to um, cover it just because it actually tends to kind of, um, kind of keep the energy a little bit in there, the, the heat, and it'll be kind of its own space. So we're just gonna stir that up and just in case we are kind of low on time, um, we are gonna be kind of cooking and boiling this water or the soup stock up until everything is a little bit tender and that we won't want it. Hope that's okay. We're just gonna mix that all up there. Any parts that weren't separated, they're gonna be separated now. And we're just gonna keep that there. Um, I'm just gonna use that to hold it. <laughs> and with that said, I think for the most part, most of our stuff is in there. I actually like adding um, our perler beads or not perler beads, our pearl barley or any kind of barley towards the end of it. Um, it's kind of almost like rice. If you tend to put it, the rice in a little bit too soon, it tends to kind of um, take a lot of the moisture. And again, if there is that issue, Please do add one more of these if you have them. If not, the flavor of the vegetables and our everything else and our beef and everything like that will kind of add to that. Um, and yeah, and I'll add that towards the end. And I guess there's moments to kind of check in with the families today and as well as share our last little greeting. Awesome. Chris, do you want to scan through? We have Peter. Peter, are you there? How's it going? Yeah, do you have any questions, any way we can support you? 
I want to make sure we leave you off on a great note in case we do have to end things on time. Uh, like I got everything in pretty much. Awesome. So uh, I just want to add the tomato in there, but um, yeah, my daughter got a whole one of those uh, broth cubes or whatever yesterday, and she ate one, so I'm only using one. Oh no, <laughs> that's a family story. <laughs> well, How did she react? We'll have that flavor, but yeah, I don't know. She's all. I was like, "Where's my other cube?" She's all like, "Like what?" And she's like, "Yeah, I ate it." <laughs> <laughs> How young are they? Are they like little, little, or older? She's two. They're two and three. Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow. Oh, actually, I am. Hold on, I'm gonna go check on them. They took they took off into the hall. Okay. okay I want you to check up on your family there. All right. Thanks, Peter. There's Gladys Willow in Arizona. Hi, guys. How's it going? You're on mute. I can't hear you, but I see your thumbs up. Yeah, throw these guys over there too. Oh yeah, we're fun. Oh, there you are. And we're just waiting for the barley to cook before having the rest. I just cut the carrots and celery. Excellent. Good job, I'm, everybody. Uh, I'm glad to see a uh, quality family time. Glad you could join us. And I'm just gonna interrupt one second. I'm gonna go back over here. Uh, I did forget that we actually had bay leaves. You can throw these in. The only thing I would actually recommend, though is that once you're done cooking, you want to fish these out because they're not as great to snack on, but they are great to add a lot of flavor. And then we can go back to the switching through the families. Hi, Jordan, how is it going? Thumbs up if you're good. Hi. Hi, yeah, I'm chilling, Beth. <laughs> your, your cooking's going well, no questions. Thank you for your tips. Oh uh, yeah, I'm actually like, I uh, graduated from like MITT for like culinary. So, okay. That's kind of well, what they taught me there. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're chilling. <laughs> Excellent. And there we have Valencia. I see you're chopping your veggies. Did you have any questions? Thumbs up if you're good. Okay. And that's Phoebe, right? How's it going? Thumbs up if you're good. I'm good. I'm just making bannock now. Oh, yes. You were way ahead, right? Yeah. Excellent. I'm glad you're able to kind of add your own stuff in there. Thanks. And we have Melissa, Equate, and Zoe. How are you doing? Thumbs up over there. What a beautiful kitchen. We're doing good, thank you. Awesome. Wait, it's just stirring away. We've got everything in. We're just waiting for to add our tomatoes and um, barley. And then, yeah, it smells awesome. delicious. I oh, know, right? Wow. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Jasmine, how, how are you guys doing there? Hello, hello, hello. You're on mute. Oh, there I am. Fridge, there I'm good. Oops, I think it's like boiling pretty good. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. And some flowers. You're making flowers? Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. I'm so glad like everybody's my... a little bit ahead of me <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> Oh no, it's perfect. You get, you're awesome, buddy. I mean, we we we. I've never made uh, barley stew before or soup before, but you, your instructions are great, and we just wanted to keep going. I'm so Excellent. happy. Yeah, I was get like a little bit self conscious when I'm either running a little bit short on time or anything like that. But realistically, like the nice thing about the stew is like, um, as long as you kind of get it in there and it's like everything soft and tender, it's it's a pretty pretty good like i can leave i can confidently leave, leave you guys with a soup can we get it's a shot of your apron again jasmine oh so cool 
<laughs> so cute. Thank you so much for joining us. makes me us. laugh. Thanks, you're welcome. I'm just going to go stir my soup while. Sabrina, how are you doing, Sabrina? Excellent. Thank you for joining us. You're on mute. Yeah. You doing no. okay? <laughs> Hi. Actually, Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming and joining us. <laughs> Yummy. Thank you. Excellent. Um, and we're okay. Oh. So, just a couple of reminders. Make sure that if you want to join us uh, in the weeks to come that you renew your interest. We do the first 20 families uh, get the ingredients. So we wanna make sure um, if you wanna participate, we're trying to accommodate, but it is uh, the first 20. So please renew your interest as soon as you can. Um, remember we are recording. We will put that emoji in front of any children's faces for privacy and um, happy that everybody's joined us. Hey, David. Hey, um, how do I renew it? You uh, inbox me or email the office or call the office. Uh, oh, Peter. I don't know. Peter, yeah. you are signed yeah. up. Yeah, we have you down. It's on my third class, right? So I thought it was already over. I was like, wow, three classes? Okay. We, but yeah. We have four more. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you're on the list. Okay. So Karen, we, we send you an email to sign up for the four other classes? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. David, you're on. I can't hear you. And with that said, um, there's not much time left, but I do want to leave you off with that teaching about um, uh, cooking broth. So one thing I do like to always mention, um, the things you'll probably need is at least an oven, right? At least to at least boil it and possibly bake it. Um, so what I like to actually do with this stuff um, is I like to put it on a, pretend this is a cookie sheet. I like to throw it in the oven for maybe like on 300 degrees or around that part. I like to place it all evenly and you can put it on for 10 minutes or five minutes, whatever. Uh, you wanna maybe gently oil that pan just so none of that sticks. Um, it does, roasting them kind of does give them that little extra bit of flavor. And once you're done with that, you can actually stir them into a, a normal pot like we have on the oven there. And you stick them on there and you pour um, cups of water, it doesn't matter. This one is not as quite a bit as much, so I wouldn't put as much. Um, and then you just kind of uh, boil them or even like simmer them for at least, bring it to a boil, lower it to a simmer and just have it cook for a couple hours. If you guys are, if you guys are watching WandaVision or anything like that, I would encourage you guys to just like do that and as like the water level lowers, you add some more water and then that all that rich flavor comes out of here. And it could be like two hours, it could, it could be one hour. The, um, the max I would put it as six <laughs> if you really wanna keep it in there. And then I would actually even encourage you to get a good stockpile of all your meals throughout the week. And then um, just do it that way. And then once you're done with that, I'd get a strainer, hopefully one that's a little bit more fine I know you can find those at um, Dollarama, like the really like thin ones. You pour them in there, you, uh, make sure you have a pot <laughs> and then you, um, you strain it out that way. And, um, and what you have left there is actually a nice um, vegetable stock. But the one thing I do wanna recommend is that you wanna use it within a couple of days of making it. So if you're planning on making soup in two days, you make your stock the day before or the day after. Or the day after, uh, two, or two to three days after. Now we're having more than that, and we actually make sure you refrigerate it before you use it. Um, so, David, would would that be something that could uh, be cooled off and then 
poured into ice cube trays and frozen? Yes, I've actually done that. Um, I used to cook for community kitchens and what we actually used to do is grab those Tupperware containers and once you cool them off and you have them there, you can actually just have big like hockey pucks worth of it. Um, for a family, you probably want to be using smaller cups um, just because you're not going to be using like seven liters to feed one meal. But um, you just want to use enough to make uh, maybe a liter or so. Good thing. I, uh, I almost forgot to mention that. I'm glad you brought that up today or mentioned it. Um, when, I, when I add the tomatoes, I add in the whole can, like the juice and all. Yeah. 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 It'll give it a nice flavor. And with that said, um, like Karen said, um, share our pictures with us, DM us, message us, text them, email our office, anything you can do, tag us. Uh, our Chris, our cameraman, will put up our social media things here. You'll kind of see it right here. And of course, do connect with us. We have lots of programs running within our office. We have a beating group as well. That's gonna be starting up soon. We have youth groups. We have sharing circles for both men and women please check it out, contact with our group. Um, and I'd love for you guys to connect with us. And I hope you guys have a good night. Uh, if you have any questions, ask me now. I'm gonna end the recording now and this is a great time for checking with me. <laughs> All right, see you guys. It looks like everybody's doing well. All your instructions are in your paper recipe though. Um, so Hello. give us that. Hi. Hi. What are these? Uh, I can't see. Chris, can you spotlight? I'm going to double check. That is your stock. Oh. The bullion? I think that's Valencia. The little cubes or the little pot? It's, it's the, uh, what? yeah, you can the throw pot. throw that in there to add some extra flavor. Yeah. Uh, for that size of a pot, I would only use one little cup, though. Okay, then. Like you could use it without, but it'll add that extra beefy flavor. All right, I put those packets in there already. Okay, good. And if awesome. you need to, you can add more, a little bit more water if it's a little thick. Um, yeah. Just really can um, improvise and adjust it to whatever you need. Um, sweet potatoes are really good in beef stew. I don't know. That sounds great. It was. So we're getting on to a little past six. Is everybody good? Thumbs up if you're good. Everybody have a good week. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.